Okay. All right. We're good to go. All righty. Everybody, good evening. I am like about this. Morning. Like I've I've been like shaking like I've been on crack or something the past hour and a half, not to mention all day after talking with Mr. Rusty. Um so this is Mr. Rusty Lankley. Did I say that right? Lackey. Lackey. Yes, Lackey. Lackey. Yeah. Rusty Lackey. Yeah. I met him down in Florida uh, at the conference. Awesome to meet him. Uh, the way I ran into him was just at a normal public place, you know, and, and uh, this is why you just need started, to be a conference. <laughs> just started talking to him. And uh, he, I'm sure he will say his favorite saying, but I'm going to steal it from him. We're just families and, and cousins. This is a family reunion. You know, it, right. so we're all a family here, and uh, he's going to share with his, with us his story, and uh, so I'm going to go on and turn the mic over to him. He's going to run the show from here on, so uh, have the floor, Mr. Rusty. All right, you know, I, you know, it's a privilege you invite me on to your team here. I got a couple team members on that's been with me a very long time. I'm the oldest distributor, Networks Global. I've been here going, actually going over, almost uh, headed towards 17 years full time. I'm a former corporate banker, and uh, let me just tell you, I got really tired of banking, and not because the money was bad, it's because I was gone. I was in a time management program. Of course, my wife and I have been together for 39 years. She's my high school sweetheart. I met her. I was 16. She was 14, and we had two little girls, and my little girls were very small, and they were growing up, and I wasn't home, and I was always going on a corporate deal, and I justified that by making a decent living for my family. I don't, we don't come from money. Rob and I come from actual poverty. And then when we first got married, I mean, we, we were raised great families. Uh, we wanted to do our own thing. And the first time I saw my wife, man, I fell in love with her. The first time I laid eyes on her, you know, I went out and told her. And uh, I said, look, I think I just fell in love with you. She looked at me like I had, something was wrong with me. And she went home and told her mom. And she said she threw up after that. So I said, was my breath bad? Or what's the throwing up thing? And uh, from then on, we just been together. We just, you know, we were joined. Uh, from the inside out, you know, and uh, we've been together all these years. We've been through the thick and the thin. And, uh, and so bottom line is, uh, uh, we got married and I come home about 13 months later and I'd bought a little mobile home, put it on a piece of land. We had out in the way out in the middle of amongst the fire ants and the sand spurs in the country. And that was my little castle. And, and I come home one afternoon, you know how you ladies get, she's all had her hands all clasped together and she was just grinning big and, I said, she said, I got some good news for you. And I said, well, I got some good news for you or some news for you. It's not good. I said, well, you need to go first. She said, we're going to have a baby. I got about half nauseous. Now I want a big family. I love my daughters and my soul, but I just lost my job that day. And you know how you ladies are. Y'all going to believe in your little old hero. And you know, she said, Oh, you'll get another one for the next six months. We, I couldn't find nothing. So we mowed yards, we picked up beer cans, we washed cars. And I know what it is to get your power turned off. I know what it is to be hungry. And any of you guys that follow me, that guy, that older guy, the pro bodybuilder I work out with every day, he's the one that gave me a job cleaning repossessed mobile homes under the table. And the first day I made 50 bucks, I had a chance to uh, get a 100-pound sack of pinto beans, uh, got $5 worth of gas in my truck and got the lights turned back on. And, uh, you know, I come home, she's happy. I got this burlap sack in my hand going up the steps. There's 100 pounds of dry beans. And she said, what's in the sack? I said, well, we ain't going to be hungry for a real long time. But I told her the day before that, I said, one day I'm going to be a multimillionaire. I'm going to take you places you ain't never been. And she said, we ain't eating three days. Why don't you get some food in the house? I said, here I come with a lot of food. <laughs> Wasn't quite what we wanted, but I knew from being born on a farm when I was younger, that it would sustain uh, you wouldn't be hungry. So for the next consecutive, six consecutive months, that was uh, breakfast, dinner, and lunch. And uh, I'll be honest with you. I was in Mexico with Robin the other week and uh, we went to our little favorite restaurant over there and she's uh, a little girl asked me if I want refried beans or black beans. I said, Oh, no beans. And she used to begin to tell me how good the beans were for you. I said, look, I ate enough beans for your whole country. I'm aware, well aware of the nutritional value, but you eat them for six months. And, uh, you know, you're not, I even won't even look at Taco Bell. I almost want to break down and cry every time I get where I thought I saw one. I just turn my head as I drive by. And so, but it's what you go through that makes you strong. It's all the adversities you go through. If you can overcome uh, uh, the obstacles in your way, 
uh, you can conquer anything, but you've got to know where you're going, but what you're after has to be worth more than where you are. And so I got my uh, first break in banking over in Washington, D.C., working with Congressman Hunkin in the banking law part of banking. And that long commute from North Carolina to uh, Washington, D.C. got really old quick. And uh, I got a chance to transfer over to Charlotte, North Carolina, where I become the senior vice president of a major, one of the top five banks. And then they really put the whip to my back, put my mind into shape. And you're out there working really hard. And now I'm gone three weeks a month. And my little girls are growing up. I don't know who they are. And I didn't want to fly home one day and regret where my kids had then grown up and got married and grown and gone. And see, my wife and kids were out there making memories of all the little sports uh, events. They had the school events, the Christmas church function. I missed every bit of that. And so they're making memories, but they're making memories without me. And I justified it working this crazy job. Oh, it was pretty nice. I mean, you fly around in private jets and, you know, big salaries and you're always dressed up in a suit. I'm from the mountains of Virginia. I was born on a farm. I don't really like suits. And, uh, but you do what you do to, to take care of your family. And so uh, here's what pushed me over the edge to go into direct sales is uh, Robin showed me this applicator thing seven and a half months prior to me leaving the bank to do this. I thought it was the dumbest thing I ever heard. I didn't think you could put a, a patch on and lose uh, our tight tone and firm your skin in 45 minutes. It keeps working for three days after you take it off. But she had 23 ladies to my home and I saw it work on every one of them. And back then, you know, Ron, we had three products. We had a defining gel, this applicator and facial mask. And that's all we had. But I saw the response and the instant gratification that, that product gave. And I got kind of intrigued. I always knew the right product, right time. Somebody could, get, could make a complete fortune. And so uh, here's what pushed me over the edge. I tracked these 23 ladies for seven and a half months. I was dabbling with maybe doing it, not doing it. And I always said direct sales ain't for me. And it still ain't for me. But I'll tell you why in a minute. And so I asked to fly out three hours late to go see my little girls get their awards. I missed every little ball game they ever had. And uh, the, the guy signed my check, said, no. And I said, why not? He said, because I said so. See, that's micromanaging. That's because I was in a time management uh, position, and he was managing my time because at that point I did not manage what was most important to me, which is my priorities. And I looked at my two little girls, and I said, I'll never miss nothing the rest of your life. And I've been on the phone with Mark Pentecost every day for the last seven and a half months, every day, seven days a week. And he sold me a vision. I caught the vision. But the one thing he said, I could go out and gain my freedom. And uh, for the last almost uh, going on 17 years, I've not woke up on an alarm clock. I live life any way I want to. I travel all over the world. I do what I want when I want to. But see, my family gets to go with me, my two little girls and, and my wife. And we're always, nine times out of ten, we're always together. And so uh, when I told him that I flew out, did what I was supposed to do, I flew back in on Sunday afternoon on Monday, I drove over to the bank. I walked in his office and he said, why didn't you get on the jet? And I said, well, because, uh, let's see, you're fired. He said, I'm fired. What does that mean? I said, well, look it up in Webster's Dictionary. That says, I don't, means I don't work for you no more. And so he said, uh, he thought I went across town to another major bank. I said, no, I'm done with this banking thing. He said, what you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to go home and do that fat patch thing. I mean, you was making fun of uh, seven and a half months ago when Robin brought it to the house. He said, you've got to be kidding. You've lost your mind. I said, no, I ain't lost my mind. I've come to my senses. He said, that's direct sales. I said, it's not for me, though. He said, I don't understand. I said, if it's, it is the means that I can go help a bunch of other people do exactly what I've done today. The best feeling of my life is when I walked away from my job. When I took ownership of my time, that means I started managing my priorities. Now, I had one dilemma. So I'm coming up by 85. I'll work over an hour away from home, and I'm commuting. And I didn't discuss it with my wife. My father was a Baptist minister for 55 years, and he taught me to respect women, period. Zero intolerance for disrespect for females. And I was supposed to discuss it with her, but guess what? I didn't do it. And I called my dad and said, man, I need you to run up to the house and tell Robin something for me. He said, what, what do you need? I said, go over and tell her I quit my job. He said, no, you didn't. I said, I sure I did. He said, did you not discuss it with her? I said, well, no, sir, I know I broke the cardinal rule, but I, I have a plan. He said, son, you're in this all by yourself. If you broke the rule and you disrespected your wife and you didn't tell her, you in this one all by yourself. And so that's just kind of how my family operates. You know, we take care of each other, but we, we do it in a very respectful manner. 
And so just as I got about 45 minutes from home, I was on the radio station, I turned the stereo up in my truck and it was a group called Leonard Skinner. I could, the beat of that, this song they were singing got my inner ear and started giving me courage. It remember when I was at Georgia Tech playing ball and the beat of the drums, it would get you fired up and you're ready to go wage war on something. And it was called Sweet Home Alabama. And I backed in my driveway. They still tell me how sweet Alabama was. I'm thinking, wow, I might have to relocate to Alabama in a few minutes because I don't exactly know the outcome of this deal. And I walked up to a front door. She's there, all grinning. Why are you home? We're going to go somewhere. I said, no, we ain't going nowhere. I said, I just need to be sure. I said, I just quit my job. She said, no, you didn't. I said, honest for God, I did. Have you ever had your wife running to go instantaneously demon-possessed? Well, that's what she did. And uh, she started looking at me with uh, her eyes were glowing and it looked like the green mist enveloped the room. And I thought I was going to have to call a priest over here for an exorcism. And she was extremely mad because she saw us going back to a mobile home with no food with two children. Now, I saw me make them a break for freedom. And so you've got to, you got to get what's important to you right up front. And if you're not doing something on the side to, to, get, to work on your, uh, your legacy, to work on your, uh, your retirement, to work on the freedom uh, for you and your family, you're in a time management program. It's because somebody else has, has told you that that's where it's at, 40 hours a week for 40 years and $40 gold watch. And who do you know that retired in that particular fashion it has anything, it retired with any dignity? I couldn't find anybody. And I knew with my skill set, I would really go to work and I would follow this system that Mark set out and we could make this thing happen. And so, uh, you know, she was looking at me like, uh, I know how much life insurance you got on you. I'll probably collect that today. And so I went in my office, I locked the door, and I picked up the phone, I called Mark, and I said, Mark, you ain't going to believe it, I'm ready to do this thing. And he said, all right, you're good. I said, I said but I'm going to do it full time. He said, uh, explain full time. I said, all right, you sold me a vision. I quit my job this morning. He stopped me and said, whoa, you, you, you quit the bank? I said, yeah. I said, walk away, you sold me a vision. Now, don't nobody go quit your job in the morning because I was not broke when I left the bank. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, you quit your job. I see, I, I figured this thing out. How are we going to do this? We're going to do it in three steps and I'm going to go to work. But you and Pam Souter better not ever not answer my phone call. I'm going to work 18, 20 hours a day. I'm going to put this thing together for you right quick. And the first, first 10 people I called said, no, that ain't for us. And, and that didn't bother me at all because I had a vision and a dream and, and I'm on a mission. And so when I got on the mission, uh, uh, you know, the next five people said yes. And those people, some of those are on the phone with us, on the Zoom with us tonight. And they come from those particular five legs that I still have. And uh, 28 days later, I see eight days later, I hit diamond. 28 days later, I hit double diamond. And they sent me my first check for about $9,997. And I put 635 people on our team. And now here we are 16 years later with my customer base. We have about 700,000 people in our organization around the world. And so, uh, you know, I've become, I've made millions of dollars doing it. And I'm just a country boy from the mountains of Virginia. I'm not sitting here, sitting here to brag on what I've done. I've worked very hard and diligently. But in the second year, I got really sick. They found a stress-induced tumor wrapper in my pituitary. I had to do a lot of treatment. That was horrible. I went from 258 as a college athlete to 750 pounds, and I'm dying. And then they gave me six months to live. I'm going to amputate both of my legs from the knees down. And, uh, that's when Dr. Don Verholz come on for a couple of years. I wasn't able to do anything. I was just too sick, but the checks kept coming in because I love mailbox money. I love residual income. I'll never do anything else but residual base uh, income. And so I don't know what just happened here, but I'll keep talking. But anyway, um, somebody's got pictures of the children and Santa Claus going up here or whatever. Uh, but anyway, um, they brought Dr. Don for whole song. We brought the first line of nutrition on and the bottom line is well, I wasn't going to take it cause they just gave me six months to live and I didn't want my children or my wife to get, um, a false sense of security and it still happened anyway. And so I wasn't going to take it, but you know, when you ladies make up your mind, we're going to do something at that point. Uh, guess what? You do it. Four days later, after she consistently stayed on me, I said, man, I drank a glass of antifreeze right now. If you give it to me, if you just be quiet. And I started on the greens, the vital, the new you, and the, and the regular. The fourth night, I slept all night. By the fourth month, I'd come off of 29 medications. Six months later, I lost a total of uh, the first 100 pounds. 
And here I am about 12 years later, I've lost 490.8 pounds. I'm 55 years old and I'm in the best shape of my life. And the beautiful part is I'm living a life on my terms now. And I don't allow circumstances to dictate my future. But all I've done for the last almost 17 years is I followed a particular system. When I say direct sales didn't for me, it's not. I think somebody's got indigestion or something. But anyway, you know, you know what? Yeah. Fuck it. Oh, Steve Edwards has his, uh, his screen sharing. His screen sharing, okay. Who is it? Steve Edwards. Hold on a second. Okay, well, I about got that off of me. There we go. Thanks to me telling you he's on Bob Zoom. All right, but anyway, here we go. Um, the beautiful part about It Works Global is we're not on um, we're not on trial any longer, and uh, our product line is not on trial. And I'm more excited today than I've ever been in my entire life. And by uh, being this excited is because this new line of products. And I've seen so many people's lives become changed over the last 17 years. And, uh, you know, it's exciting to see get, giving people that particular hope and that hope of people gaining your freedom. And so how do we make this thing happen? Is number one, you have to become a product of the product. And uh, once you become a product of the product at that particular point, you get excited. And once you get excited, you want to share it and we don't we're not looking for any glorified salespeople. we're looking for people that are excited about a product that's impacted their life in a particular manner i've seen so many people get their health back i've seen so many people start to lose weight that had problems with it and here i am down 490.8 pounds and that's taken a while but it's very consistent now what i would like to ask you show me somebody else that has used a product line for all these years and still having consistent results after all these years by putting the right stuff in. I can't find it. I've offered a big reward. If you'll bring me that person in your product and show me their story and their, their doctor's records and document how much you've lost, you've done it consistently for the last 12 years. I can't find nobody who wants to take the challenge. And so what happens? How do you become successful is you consistently stay with it. Every day you get up and you fight every single day to where you want to go. But I'll tell you what will change you. If they ever tell you you're going to die, if they ever tell you that, guess what's going to happen? Everything in about you, if you want to live, will change your mind. Everything that you thought was hard won't become hard. You'll do things that you would not normally do. You'd get up and go life to the next level, and you'll get up and fight every day. And every morning I get up at 4 a.m., and I'll run about 20 miles a day. And why do I do it? I don't care if it's snowing. I don't care if it's raining. I don't care if it's 90 degrees outside. You know, how do you lose 490 pounds? That's not easy, but it was a lot easier than, than the alternative of, of laying in a recliner at 750 pounds with a cast your legs with this big round, it would abscess and rupture. It's easier than the treatment. And the, and the more you start to succeed, the better you start to feel, the better you get. And the more hungry you get to succeed and the more hungry you get to share it with other people because you don't want nobody to live like you do. And so it are in that particular shape. So. That's what happens when you manage or some you're in a time management program. As soon as you get to two or three things that becomes a priority in your life, guess what happens? There's about three things. If you'll focus 80% of your time on that'll generate about 80 to 90% of your revenue. And so how do you do that? Uh, I take a yellow legal pad every single day and I draw a, a line down the middle of it. And I write down, what are my assets and what are my liabilities in, in my liability column? Just believe it or not, a lot of names come up in my liability column. And those are people that are wasting my time. They're not going anywhere. And there's a, those are the people that are broke that most people take advice from. If people you're taking advice from, if you're not willing to trade places with them due to their advice, I wouldn't take any advice from them. Because if you apply broke advice, you're going to end up broke. And for people that try to make you doubt you and doubt what you're doing and, and doubt direct sales, if they've never been successful at it, why would you apply that advice? If they're broke or if they owe anything, if you owe credit cards, mortgages, or car payments, I don't take advice from people that, that are in debt. I'm not. And, uh, and see, you have to determine how you want to live life, but who are you going to follow? 
So do you want to follow somebody that's lost the same 20 pounds for the last 20 years over and over again, they gain it, they lose it, they gain it, they lose it. Who do you want to follow? A guy that's lost 490 pounds over uh, 12 years. Yeah, kindly, he might have it together. And so that's long-term success. And that's the difference between uh, being in the barnyard with a managed uh, program of chickens running around in the barnyard versus flying with the eagles. Uh, do you want to take advice from somebody that's in debt or, or that just makes about thirty or forty thousand dollars a year and they're just okay with that? Do you want to take advice from somebody that's consistently made seven figures over the course of what we're doing? You think they can tell you how to do what they've done? Absolutely, because it's only in three simple steps. We just duplicate it and repeat it, duplicate it, repeat it. And we teach people to do that. That's how you grow big businesses. And so um, how do we make it work? Global work. Well, number one, we have uh, uh, first to market products. We have products that works right now in 45 minutes. That's the applicator. This new keto coffee, we've got people literally melting by utilizing the keto coffee and the new creamer and stuff out. Between my wife and two daughters, I think they're down a combined 57 pounds of belly fat in the last six weeks. Now they work out. You know, we just don't sit on our butts and think it's just everything is magic. But what it's done is killed the appetite for junk. Now they still have a day or two that they eat whatever they want, but I've, I've watched them and they're not eating the same things. They're, they're, they're more health conscious and they love the way they look, but they also they love the way they feel. And so once you start falling in love with you again and loving the way you look and the way you feel, chance that you, you're giving your body what it needs, the chance that you falling off the wagon is will be slim and none. And so at that point, it begins to be excited. And once you get excited about something, pure raw excitement will, will trump talent any day, talent that won't work. And so when you, when you start that, people get excited. They want to follow people that are excited because what you're doing is you're giving people hope. And so once you become a hope broker and you're giving people hope, what happens? They want to follow you because now you've taken a leadership role and you're building your sphere of influence. Influence is where it's at. And so, it, you know, uh, you look at people as what, uh, as far as character, that's what, that's, in, that's part of moral fiber. People looks at you with respect with the moral fiber you have because you have four or five traits of a leader, but they know they can depend on what you say. You know, when most people say something, you kind of wonder, well, I wonder what they mean by that. You're not sure because their actions are much different than what they're talking about. And so if you want to go to the magnitude of earning six and seven figures, it takes a while to do it. This is not a success overnight, but you can get success here quicker than you can work in 40 hours a week. I can tell you that for sure. And so once you do that, it's what you practice when people aren't around. Are you exercising? Are you taking care of your body? You can't go trade this one in. All you can do is make it better or it's going to get worse. So you can't stop change. Change is going to happen every single day. As you get older, you're going to change. I'm sorry to tell you. A tree can't be nothing but a tree. A dog can't be nothing but a dog. But the human mind, there's limitless possibilities with the human mind. It's how big can you dream? And so right now, every one of us are right here because of the size of our dream. That's exactly where you are right now. And so you're going to have to start to dream bigger in order to go bigger places. And I was over in Austin, Texas, not too long ago, and I was, I was going to look at some horses. And I was with this rancher, and we was getting, uh, we was down the road. We've been on the road for hours. And I said, dude, when are we going to get to the ranch? He said, man, you've been on my ranch for the last three hours. And I said, you kidding? He said, yeah, we can ride for three days that way, and you'll still be on my family ranch. And the first stupid thing I said, I, I started, after I said it, I knew I should have just kept my mouth shut. I started to pull my pocket knife out, out and cut my tongue off, throw it out the window. I said, man, I'd hate to pay the property tax on all this land. And he said, well, we have oil wells. We have natural gas. We do, uh, we breed rodeo bulls. That's $2 million every time we breed one of those bulls. And he said, we got all these horses you're going to look at. And he looked at me like I was some kind of poverty stricken homeless person. And right then, I knew I had not been dreaming big enough. I'd been playing too small, even though we've had some major success, but nothing like we're going to have. Because our dream and our vision, our goal is to help you, everybody on here, become a six and seven figure to meet me in a millionaire's club in 2019. Now, how do we do it? Well, you just got to have the courage and the belief in yourself. And see, when you stop giving a damn what other people think about you because of what you're doing, if they're not paying your bills and if they're not much more wealthier than you, if they're in the same category and they're all in debt and they're struggling and they're living for the weekends and they're working paycheck to paycheck, I cannot take advice from you about my future, my finances, especially when my family's involved. And so, one, I got in the business. Back then, it was $300. Now, it's $99. You get four applicators. You get the fit five. Things just going to make you feel better, look better. And 
become more healthy, where you can live a more quality of life. And so that's joining the team. So whatever your sales tax is and your little bit of shipping to your zip code. And so that's step one. And step two, you go out and find four people that want to go on this journey. This especially this, this new keto diet we have. And I had a girl tell me the other day, she said, well, that keto is bad for your kidneys. I said, no, you're confused. It's not a bunch of protein. It's more high quality fat. You're talking about the Atkins diet. So get your story straight when you want to talk to a guy like me because I've lost all this weight and my kidney functions are perfect. And I love this keto product. I love the keto lifestyle because I'm seeing massive amounts of results and it's quicker and easier than anything I've ever seen or tried. And it's consistent and it's effective. I like things being effective. And so now I have every product and plus a diet program. I have everything you need and I'm never hungry. Neither is my wife for $2. And man, you know, you hang out and travel with us. We like to eat on the fun places. And now we go to those fun places like Jackson's is where I take my daughters on daddy daughter dates. Every month I fly from North Carolina to, to Tampa, Florida to eat there. That's their favorite sushi restaurant. And I was there this week when y'all were there and they thought I was on a rabbit diet. I didn't want the stuff. I just got my, my pan sear tuna and I didn't want none of the rest of the stuff to go with, especially the dessert menu. I mean, normally I was kind of crazy about this stuff. I wasn't this time. I didn't even want it. And so it's about changing your lifestyle. If you're not in the lifestyle you want, it's not fulfilling you. And that lifestyle has got you behind the eight ball and got you living for the weekend. You need to live for Mondays. Monday mornings, I don't roll over. I roll out. I mean, I don't roll out. I roll over. Even though I get up very early, I don't need an alarm clock to do it. I get up because my passion pulls me up for what I want to accomplish in the day. So you find four people that they could benefit from these products, four customers. That's step two. Once you get it completed, that will unlock every part of this compensation plan that we offer. And this is the strongest compensation plan on planet Earth. I'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody, any other company. And I, think, I love all direct sales companies. But show me what I'm fixing to tell you. Man, I got about 700,000 people. We'll come over there with y'all, but you can't handle it. I know you can. And number one, it, it wasn't what we do or how we do it. It's why we do it. It got me hooked with Mark and, and become best friends. Because 90 days after I joined Mark, we, we become broke. Uh, the bills got higher than the sales were coming in. And Mark went out and flipped the house and double mortgaged his house just to make sure I was paid. So he put his family on the line to make sure my family was taken care of. And right then I knew that was a guy I needed to be in business with long term because he had integrity. And he's a very Christian based type company. You're very Christian based people and but a man that can dream, but a man that will perform, stand up against all odds and make it happen. That's the guy you want to be with. That is the eagle mentality, not the chicken mentality. And so that's step two. And then step three, you find three people to do this with you, three people that you want to be instrumental in helping them change the, the the, the future, their family, their legacies to the next level. And see, this is not going to be a lot of talk. It's going to be action. Action is what, what makes it happen. Even if you have a job, when you show up and punch that clock or you're on salary, they expect you to take action when you get there. If not, you're going to get fired. If some of these people worked for me at the bank, I would have fired them a long time ago. And a couple of them I might want to send to jail. I don't know. I don't believe in inflation or manipulation. And so you find three people to do that with you. And help one of them just do two, complete steps one, complete steps two, and complete steps three. And then you start over and do it again. And while all the while you're working with them to do exactly the same. And so that becomes a ruby position. And that's going to earn you right around $500 of residual base income every month. Now, remember when I said the little girl asked me the other week, said, well, how much do you make your first month? I said, I know what the check was. But I said, I don't really know. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, God, here I am 17 years later. I'm still getting paid off for that month. I don't know. It's in the mega millions. And uh, it's put me in a position where I really don't have to do anything. But now I work harder than I ever have. I work smarter with this technology because I got these all the way to midnight. And so I love what I do. I love being out there helping people. See, you guys aren't on my team, but you're part of my family. I make nothing to come in here and help you. I'm not doing this for the money aspect of it. I'm doing this because I want you to succeed at my level. That's what creates solvency in our company and our opportunity. That gives you a chance to be a full-time mommy and a full-time daddy. It gives you a chance to not have to stress over the bills. That gives you a chance not to just plan for one week out of the year. And it gives you a chance to start to plan for your life. If your spouse and your children ain't worth it, then you're lazy to me. That's the way I look at you. This is America, the greatest nation. Oh, yeah, we got our problems, but hell, everybody's got their problems. But we're still the greatest nation, superpower on earth. And see, nobody owes you nothing. I don't care what your mentality is or what whoever told you they do. 
if you're not willing to work for it, you're not willing to get it. You'll always be in a time management program. And say, what is time management programs? What did I say? Well, I'm going to say it's your schooling. Uh, it's your job. Uh, at prison. If you can't play pretty, they lock you up and they manage your time. That's time management programs. Find out what your priorities are by, by making an asset list and a liability list. And don't be like a dog chasing his tail that you're just real busy working on all those uh, uh, liabilities. Get over here and focus on your priorities so you can live life on your terms and you start getting out of debt and you you'll be surprised how you'll start to change about that job now i ain't telling you to quit you might love your job but if you won't do it for free and it's taking time away from you and your family's making memories and you're not there you need to really think about what i'm saying and so you do that so here, here's the kicker we used to sit in the boardroom and mark would tell us when we got to this point what would happen and well, where is that point now how he's going to uh, increase the pay how he's going to increase a lot of different things to help you get to the next level so here it is uh you know we've done billions of dollars worth of sales but this year something a little different happened we're to the, we're to the point that we need to be we've got the top-notch leadership in every facet of our company all over the world so when you help two people go ruby and you're just getting in tonight or you've been in a while and you just get two qualified legs and a qualified leg is four hundred dollars worth of customers and you bond your product so you're going to go emerald if you go emerald if you've been with us a while prior to the first of the year you got to the end of this month to do it can you do it uh, you can if you make up your mind but that's going to get you a five thousand dollar bonus that is a five thousand dollar bonus that is a five thousand dollar bonus now if your job is not willing to pay you five thousand dollar bonus plus everything else that comes with you, you might need to step up, get your ears popped up and listen and start writing people's names down. Cause if you don't go get them, your friends, your sister, your cousin, your coworkers are going to be coming to you in the next 30 days with the same opportunity because we're on fire. It's not no joke. We ain't playing. It ain't nothing hold you back from living the life you want except you and your belief system. And if you're around those people that's whipped your mind into shape, I call it modern day slavery. If they've whipped your mind into shape that you need to show up and they micromanage your time, they tell you when you can go to the bathroom, when you can go to lunch and when you get to go home, they're actually telling you what you can do on the weekends and how you can live your vacation because they're in control of your what? Your money and your time. As long as they can control your money, they'll control your time seven days a week, 24 hours a day for the rest of your life. You've got to believe that you deserve more. You were made for more. See, when you were nothing more than a fertilized egg going down your mother's fallopian tomb, God started throwing blessings. And he started throwing gifts into you. And so once he starts throwing those gifts, in you, do you really want to go die at the pace you're at? You die like brand new. You'd never use the gifts. You never even took the bow off the box. And you're asking God for all these blessings. You're on your knees and you're believing and you're holding up and you get off your knees, man. He gave you what you need. You have everything you need this very second to go to the next level in life. The only thing that's holding you back is fear and those damn people you're hanging around. Those are the ones that's instilling the fear in you. Do you really want to be like the people you hang around? Because if you say no, where well, you're going to be because that's who you hang around. You become like your environment. You can no longer allow the environment to change you. You have to change the environment. Now, when you go diamond, because you created one little ruby and, and one little emerald, um, and three little qualified legs, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to get your $5,000 bonus, but you can get a lot of coding money. You get some fast start money. You get all the generational money. You get all the unit level money, but you're going to get a matching bonus of whatever the person's check that you helped go emerald for the next six months. You're incentivized to go work with that person. Do you know why? Because you're getting percentage of their entire check. Now, what if you had sponsored me? Your first month, I sponsored a guy like me with that. And I ain't bragging on me. I just went to work because I didn't want to go back to the bank. You know why? Because I told him I wasn't coming back. I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to, I wanted to honor my word. I ain't coming back. And I didn't want to let my wife know she was right. I should have had to go back with my head down and, you know, then I would really been pistol whipped over there. And so uh, what happens at this point, you get an override check on everything you go. And, and as people on this Zoom right now, you have the ability to go earn seven figures this year. You can ask Teresa Garrett, she's been with us the longest. You have the ability, if you go to work right now with what we have in line, it is the strongest compensation plan on earth, period, in direct sales. You have a chance to go out and help other people succeed, and the more they succeed, the more money you make. That's called the law of reciprocity. See, I understand if I come into your life and I help make some of consequence happen, it just reciprocates back into my life. So the more I go and help other people succeed, the more successful I am. And see, success can't just flow to you. It has to flow through you. 
Remember this, you'll always be paid in direct proportion for the quality of efforts expended when helping somebody else achieve whatever it is they want. And so you can never show up with an agenda. And here's how people that ride the elevator to success, they go in, they punch a penthouse, and they just grin up there. They got 15 seconds of fame on a stage, and they made a couple dollars, and all of a sudden it starts to go away. What, what, what happened? Well, number one, they rode the elevator. They don't have the respect for the business they grew, and they don't have the maturity to handle it. But if you climb the ladder to success, you'll be here in the next 17 years with me. And I told Mark this weekend, I said, I had a private meeting with him on Wednesday prior to come. I said, I'm not excited about the last 16 plus years. He said, what do you mean? I said, hell, I'm excited about the next 16 years. Where are we going to go and the lives we're going to change? And for the people that's going to finally see that direct sales ain't for us, it's for them. It's because we're going to work very hard and help them accomplish whatever their dreams are. See, people that ride the elevator to success, they have an agenda. You know what the agenda is, Ron? It's them. They're the agenda. And so when you got somebody that's all about them, Get away from those people. You've got to find some people, somebody that's about the people. What can I do to help you get to the next level? As long as you're willing to work, we will work with you around the clock, day in and day out. You know, we're very conditioned, man. We exercise hard every day, but we mental condition. And see, when you run into something that's very hard in life, that's not a roadblock. Only if you're, if you are a name it roadblock, it's nothing more than a stepping stone. So if you never go through the test, you will never have a testimony. If you never go through the mess, you'll never have no message. It's kind of like going to school. When you go to school, you're, you study hard and you're tested. If you pass a test, well, you get your degree. If you don't, they send you back to school again. <laughs> Ain't no difference in that and this and how you live life, how you live life every single day. And so you got to make up your mind to dream bigger. you got to stop playing small in life. Most people are just playing small. They're playing it safe, and you're playing it safe right into the way those people that manage your time want you to. And now they got control of you because they control what? Your money and your time. And you, what we want to do, our vision this year is to make sure every one of you owes zero debt, that you have no debt, period. Now, how would that be? Dream with me a minute. How would that be if you woke up right now and you owed nobody nothing? Are you going to really go up to that penny, any job you got? You might have some kind of title, but they still, if you're not uh, the CEO or the owner of that company, you're still in a time management program. Can you just imagine waking up in the morning because you went after something, you create a legendary legacy, how your children are going to think about you. The same, can you imagine if you got a hold of this, but can you imagine if you don't, you were here tonight and you heard it, you know, the reason they put grave the richest places on, on earth is the graveyards. That's all those dreams that died with those people because they worried about other people. It's all those books that didn't grow, the songs that didn't get sung, the things that could have, uh, they didn't get rode. The things that could have changed the course of humanity died with those people because they worried about what? What other people thought. And they are worried about criticism. At that point, if you're worried about that, you're going to always be in time management. But the day you, if you get to the point you don't care about that is the time you become a priority manager and you'll start to own your time. You'll start to take your, your, your family on six and eight week vacations. In fact, you start living your life on nothing but a vacation. And that's what it is when you break free. You do what you want when you want to do it. And so you know why they put grave markers on, on, on your headstone? They got the day you're born. They got the day you died. It's what's in between that. It counts. And uh, most people live such a meager existence. It's just their name, the date they were born, the date they died, and nothing in between. it. And most of you, they, they want your kids, your grandkids, don't even remember who you are, just a faded memory. Because they, about the time they get your butt in the ground, that Sunday you get back to the church, they're going to fight over where's the potato salad, and they already forgot about you because you didn't do nothing monumental to, 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 to put yourself in a position of leadership to enhance the betterment of mankind or the betterment of your family. How do you want to be remembered? Do you want to be kind of like that movie you get to see, Hercules? Well, that was a real character. He was not fictitious. Here we are thousands of years later because he went out against all odds and he fought the giants and he beat them. That's why they're still making movies and writing fables and all kinds of stuff about that character all these years later. See, I just believe that God put you here on this earth to live um, a supreme, superior life. You're going to have your struggles. You know what the difference between excitement and fear is? Just how you label it. You get the same adrenaline pump. The adrenaline is what causes you to be excited or scares you to death. And if you're living in fear, I'm sorry for you. Get, around to, get away from those scared people. See, those are the chickens. And see, a chicken is a nasty bird. They eat everything in the barnyard. But they're in a containment, which is time management. 
they eat cow manure, they eat chicken manure, they eat sticks, they eat bugs. And the chicken, you remember when you was in the first grade, somebody said, you chicken, that'd make you so mad because you didn't want to be a chicken, you'd be ready to fight. My great-grandmother, we saw a fox come running across the creek one time, and she said, oh, my God, he's going to get one of my chickens. And one thing I noticed as a kid, those chickens could have turned around and all jumped on him and ran him off. But the chickens didn't have to run faster than the fox. They just had to run faster than the slowest chicken. And he got one. And so don't be a chicken. Don't be scared and don't, don't value other people, broke people's opinions. And the other week, my daughter and I, we, we got to the, the people we run with very early every morning. There's a beautiful young lady sitting there and my daughter's introduced us to it. I don't like to really talk much in the morning. I'm trying to get focused on the miles we fixed to run. I want to set a good pace and I actually want to be out front of those young guys. And, you know, I started running with a different group of people because I was coming in first to, uh, ahead of the ones. My daughter said I was getting weaker by running with a bunch of weak people. So I, <laughs> I moved to a different group of people to run with. And this young lady looked at me. She said, she, I said, what do you do for a living? She said, I'm a psychologist. I said, wow, which field? She said, marriage counseling. I said, wow. She told me she's 39 years. I said, how long have you been married? She said, oh, I'm not. I said, wow, you ever been married? She said, yeah, twice. I said, well, thank you for telling me that. She grinned. I said, because I ain't going to never take no advice from you. She said, why not? I said, well, hell, you tried it twice. And you, what kind of advice are you giving to people now? I said, I'm looking at bottom line numbers. What? How many of them are getting divorced like you? What could you possibly tell me? It would make me love my wife any more or any less to stay with her or to leave her. And then she got angry. She said, well, how long have you been with yours? I said, 39 years. Same girl. I said, but I'm going to tell you, I took advice of a man, Mr. Lee Hartman, a little Jewish guy. He helped my father build radio stations for the church. And he'd been married to his wife for 60 years. I said, Lee, what's your secret? She said, you've been married for 60 years. She's always with you. She looks at you like you're some kind of God or something. And she can't do enough to love and on you. And I said, it's almost getting sick. And uh, he said, well, you know what I did to woo my wife, wife's love to start with? I said, yeah, what'd you do? He said, I sent her flowers, but I sent her big bouquets of flowers. I said, yeah, we did that. He said, I wrote her handwritten love notes and I mailed them to her. I said, why'd you mail them to her? He said, I created an experience. He said, I got Hallmark cards and I wrote them out and I mailed them to her. I said, you did? I said, what, you create the more experience? And is that what you're trying to get? He said, yeah. I said, we all did that. So what's the secret? He said, I've done it every week for 60 years. So Miss Lackey, I've been with her for 39 years. Guess what happens to her every week for the last 39 years? And I just told her yesterday. I said, I'm not excited about the last 39 years because our anniversary is next week. I said, I'm excited about the next 39 years, baby. We're going to have more fun than you've ever dreamed of in your wildest imagination. And we're going to go places we ain't never been. We're going to have more people than we've ever helped. And we're going to enjoy life. And we're going to do it hand in hand, arm in arm. Because when I was sick, this woman took care of me when I was about to die. She could have left and took what I'd already made and took the kids and left. But she did. And see, what I want to get to this point of here, you got to be a finisher. And, you, you know, a lot of people, they're always starting so much stuff. And they're excited for about two minutes till it gets hard and they quit. When is the last time you got inspired by a personal story to quit? Well, I tried it for two weeks and it just got hard, so I quit. Hell, I ain't expi inspired by that. I want the person that's, that's, that's went through the struggles. I want the person that can tell me how they've done it, how they lost all the weight, how they've been in business all these years. And there's a bunch of them just like me. How we've done it, what we did to do through it. Because as you grow, you start to learn. And when you start to learn, you start to gain the wisdom and the knowledge. And when somebody else is having the problems you used to have, you reach back in your cerebral vortex, you pull out the solution to a problem. And see, when you make more money, when you make more money and you, you promote to the next position, whether it's in your job or here, you get more responsibility. And when you get more responsibility, you create more solutions for more people. That's why you make more money. They don't give you first grade money. They don't pay you CEO for the, for first level entry positions. It's because you work your way to the next level. You promote, you promote, you promote, you make more money, you make more money, you create more solutions, more solutions for more problems, for more problems for more people. That's where you become a real leader in what we do today. And they, you know, they say we're lacking a lot of resources. They say we're lacking in oil, we're lacking in energy, we're lacking in gold, we're lacking in this. And that's all crazy. We ain't lacking in nothing. It's one thing, one natural resource we're lacking in all over the world today, and that's leadership.
people that will stand up and look you in the eye, tell you the truth, say, come on, I'll drag you to your damn knees, Sean. I'll take you to the next level. As long as you're not willing to quit, I'm willing to believe in you. And I close it. I do lives every single day, seven days a week, and have for a long time. And this is what I'm going to convey to you tonight. Promise me one thing, cousins, that you'll never quit on who you are and where you're going. And I promise you, I'll never quit on you. I'll never quit believing in you. I don't care what team you own. I won't quit believing in you until you get to where you're going. And see, every one of you, you're the ones that puts the meaning behind the words that you say. Most people say they're cliche. It's just something I do. It's getting in the habit. It's robotic. Love you, honey. You roll over and go to sleep. You're leaving them. I love you, honey. And out the door you go. And one day you wake up and honey ain't here no more. I've had that to happen in my life several times the last few years. And so when I tell you something, I mean it. I'm the first person in my, in my household that gets up every morning and makes sure I communicate how much I love everybody that I care about. Right then. They know it. In case I don't make it back this afternoon for my travels, they're going to know that that's what I'm going to leave them with. Not fussing and fight, not stressing, but how much I love. And so when I tell every one of you that I love you, I truly mean it. From the bottom of my heart, some of you I don't even know, but you're part of my family, so I love you. And I love you from the bottom of my heart because I not only love you, I love your family and where you're going because I believe you deserve to be loved. If you don't feel loved, there's a guy here in North Carolina that loves you. And I think every one of you matter. Every one of you matter to me. And that's not no joke. I've been here a long time. And see, when I say you matter, it's not only because you matter, because your family matters. And, and, and where you're going as a family, that matters. And when you feel loved and you know you're, you matter, you will go out and give it your best. You give it your all. And when I say you're valuable, not only you're valuable, but your children are valuable. Your spouse is valuable. Your time is valuable. You've got to say, see the same value I see in you. You've got to see it in yourself. Now, how do you do that? You go in the bathroom and shut the door and you have a, a meeting with you that you deserve better. Your family deserves more. And it's your matter, it's your love, and you have value to offer other people. That's all it takes to go from where you are to where you want to be. The question I have for you tonight, in closing, is where do you want to be? Ron? Yes, sir. Anything else you want to add to this? Man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really touched by your story. I mean, I heard some of it in Florida this past week. But man, it's it's just honor. Like, I'm almost dumbfounded. I love watching you. And I told you I love you. And uh, it, 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 it's the past few days, past few days watching your lives has changed the way I view it. And, and, and the way I see people now, it's, it's just changed me already. And I, I'm stoked for the next day and the next day. And that's what I look forward to. Well, you know, Ron, that's, that's what it's all about. That's bonding together and becoming unified as an organization, as a big family. That's why we call it one team, one mission. And once you become unified as the one team on mission, see, there's no one man shows on earth. Ain't nobody ever done nothing by itself. And I, I want to tell you, like, can I tell you, lady, something? Miss Ryan, can I tell you something? Yeah. See, <laughs> most of you ladies don't really know who you are. And I'm going to do this, and I have to go. I'm almost late for another Zoom. <laughs> well, see, in Genesis 1, I'm a devout Christian. I'm not overly religious, but I am devout in my belief system and my value system. In Genesis 1, God created man, and he gave him his work. His work is not your job. It's the gift he gave you to go out and be happy. As you go out in your gift, you're extremely happy because you're, you're in your gift, and you're helping people. You're really making a difference. That's how you utilize your gift. Us guys, we couldn't keep it together. We get distracted easily, and all kinds of wild things happen, and we run off like a, a dog chasing a rabbit. And I know I have a guard German shepherd over here in his kennel right here. I just flew him in from Germany a couple years ago. He's my best buddy. The only male, me and him, is the only two males in our family. And so then um, in Genesis 2, he snapped Adam's rib off and he made woman. Now, why did he do that? Because you needed help. We all needed help. Because at birth, all you women are seven times more mature than we are the day you're born. And see, and why did God put give you to man? Because man does what he does. He can't help it. He can't help how he is. He operates on a different uh, uh, frequency than you do. But you have to keep us all in balance, reel us in. So God said, I've got to give him a multiplier. Because the poor boy sure can't do it by himself. And so here, here's the way it happens with you ladies. Y'all spend 90% of the world's money. 
And see, without y'all, you deserve to spend more than that. Because without y'all, we would absolutely be nothing. That's why every every good CEO has a lot of great secretaries and great assistants. And then most all of them are female. And I just got a new assistant, the most effective woman in my life other than my wife and my two daughters. And see, you're multipliers. And so your husband can give you a seed. You'll give him a baby. Now you start his family. He can give you a house. You'll make it into a home. Now he has a family and a cozy house because you decorate and you make it conducive to making it so comfortable and a safe haven in place. And a man can give you his vision, his dream, and you'll help him cultivate that. You cultivate, you're, you're actually raising another child with, with this guy. And at that point, you get about two years later, he's not quite got to where he told you he's going to go because he got distracted at some while you wasn't looking. And you start to remind him of it. And he says, you're nagging and fussing. No, you're not. You're just reminding him what he told you. You want him to honor his word. So now you have, he has a family. It is of the utmost sacred to me. He has a wonderful home that he feels loved and he can love and he can come in and take care of what his, he's supposed to. And now you're keeping him reined in on his vision as to where he can go to the next level and take your family with him and live life the way God designed you to live life on your terms and not allowing circumstances to dictate your future. At this point, without these women, Ron, and the loves of our life, we would allow circumstances to dictate our future. And we put them ladies through more than you can imagine. And we don't even realize it. And all she wants to do is be cuddled and loved and let you, and you, you let her know how much you love and appreciate her. And so ladies, I want to tell you this, never lower your standard for some little boy. And I've raised some great independent young ladies in my house. My two daughters, they still live with me. They're 21 and 27. We fly all over the world. We hunt a lot. Uh, we do all kinds of crazy wild things. And they're daddy's girls. And I said, you have to raise your standard. I want you to become independent. I want you to create your own identities. You don't even need me. Because if you don't, you get some little boy over here. We have to take him on a hunting trip. And he didn't make it back. The bear got him and I fell asleep and I didn't shoot the bear right before he ate him. And so that's kind of how I feel about my two daughters. But see, I think all you ladies are that valuable. Never lower your standard for some little punk ass kid. Find somebody that loves you for who you are and that wants you to be strong and independent. And he's not, his feelings aren't hurt when you start making more money than he does. His feelings are not hurt when you go out and you stand up and you become the CEO or like you're supposed to be. And see, we got everything in a reverse order here. You get everything in order. You watch things begin to flow to the next level. It becomes unified. And you see, most people with that reverse order, once you get the order right, see, there's three kinds of people. There's poor people and they're broke. They're always chasing money. They always want to win the lottery. They just need $50 to get by here. They never think about the future. And then you have rich people. They're always worried and they're defined by what they have. They're defined by their cars, their houses, and their titles. And then you have wealthy people that we always capitalize on ideas. And if you capitalize on the ideas and you help other people succeed, guess what you'll have? You'll have the money and all the things you want to go with. It. And until you get that, that in the right order, capitalizing on the ideas and helping other people succeed, you'll always be chasing money. You'll always be broke. You'll always be in debt and you will die working a job. And if you're ready to take ownership for your life and become the CEO of your own life right now, now's the time to get it done. And Ron, and that's the end of my deal. I appreciate it. Hey, it's my pleasure. Y'all guys, friend me on Facebook, watch my lives, and, and give me some feedback on my Facebook page because Mr. Pentecost, he knows I'm doing this for you. So uh, give me some feedback on what you thought on my Facebook page and uh, so he can review it and do it as well. Is that okay?